This is Dr. Lam, and welcome to today's session on the discussion of the neuroendocrine basis of adrenal fatigue syndrome. First, we need to understand that stress enters our sphere through a small area of the brain called the locus ceruleus, or the LC. Discovered in the 18th century, this area of the brain stem deals with the physiological responses to stress and panic. An important homeostatic control center of the body, the LC receives input from a variety of sources. From our senses, it then is routed through the hypothalamus, the amygdala, the cerebellum, as well as the prefrontal cortex. Emotional pain and stresses from the outside world enters our inner world through these pathways. Once arrived, excitatory signals trigger production and releases of norepinephrine from the LC. Now, norepinephrine has two functions. In the brain, it acts as a central neurotransmitter and keeps us aroused. We become alert. Norepinephrine released from the LC also increases the sympathetic discharge and inhibit parasympathetic tone in the peripheral nervous system, which we will go in later. At that point, it exerts its excitatory effect directly on the target organ, such as the heart. So as a result, the heart rate as well as the heartbeat force goes up. Aside from being the principal production site of the brain norepinephrine, the LC is also connected on the output side to many parts of the central nervous system, including the spinal cord, brainstem, cerebellum, hypothalamus, amygdala, as well as cerebral cortex. So as you can see, it's a two-way street with many, many directions and a collaborative network of information flow to the LC and out of LC. Collectively, the LC and the areas of the CNS, or the central nervous system, affected by the norepinephrine it produces, are described as the LCNA system, stands for Locus Ceruleus Noradrenergic System. Noradrenergic is the same as norepinephrine, and that's what it connotates here. Now, the distribution, as we talked about, of the LCNA system is ubiquitous and is consistent with the prominent role that norepinephrine plays in a variety of central nervous system functions as well as behavior that includes local motor functions, cognitive functions, motivation, and attention. Now, what is important is that once the LCNA system is activated, it is responsible for much of the psychological effects we see in adrenal fatigue syndrome. They can include fear, anxiety, alertness, memory changes, and REM sleep dysregulation. Psychiatric research has documented that the role LC plays in cognitive function in relation to stress is complex and is multimodal. There's no one direct link. Multiple factors are involved. From a neuroendocrinological perspective, it is clear that the body's multiple stress response pathways are offered in a redundancy pattern to handle stress in many, many cases. It has ensured the survival of our species for quite some time. What is confusing clinically is that in the adrenal fatigue syndrome, these pathways can be activated a few at a time, all at once, or quickly or slowly as the body sees fit. The body is truly in control, but the symptoms are so convoluted because it depends on what stage and how the body perceives stress. Different parts on different systems are being activated all at the same time as necessary. To fully appreciate the body's heroic effort to rescue us from stress, it is important to first understand that our brain is in control. The pathway is through the neuroendocrine system. What one person perceives as stress may not be for another person. Based on what is perceived as stress by the mind, the body automatically activates any or all of the anti-stress mechanisms in place. In order for us to fully grasp the big picture, clinicians need to take a step back because it is easy to be confused when you look too close. The picture from afar is quite clear. We see a body in trouble, unable to maintain homeostasis, and trying to use all its ways and means to recover on its own using the methods that it knows by activating any or all of the built-in stress response system modulated by the neurological and the endocrine system working in tandem. The more severe the stress, the more other systems such as musculoskeletal, psychiatric, cardiac and immune systems are also affected adversely. Remember that the body is a closed system. Severe dysregulation of one system invariably impacts other systems. This is inescapable. 
despite this clinical chaos, we can see a controlled collapse that is logical and systematic from the body's perspective. Symptoms are simply the messages or signs the body sends us warning of such impending danger and thereby alerting us to take appropriate action. Now, if stress are never really resolved or let go, then even despite a losing battle, the mind continues to be ultimately in charge throughout this ordeal through its various neuroendocrinological stress response pathway. The neuroendocrine basis of adrenal fatigue is quite clear and solid. Evidence-based scientific research has proven beyond a doubt that stress can kill.